welcome, welcome to our weekly, our weekly New Gambia platform talk show. Uh, today is June 19, 2022. We have our guests here. I'm going to start with a female. I hope, um, David, you don't mind. <laughs> Not at all. These are our mama. We are nothing yeah. without them. <laughs> yeah, we have Adam Abba here. Um, he's a uh, community act, uh, immigration act, immigration advocate, correct? That is correct. Yes. And uh, welcome, Adama, on board. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And we have David here from the Borough President's Office. And he, 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 I mean, he is a community um, service community service advocate, correct? Or community service? Yeah, I'm the new community services director uh, for director. the prison office, yes. Yeah, community service director. Hmm. Welcome, David. Thank you. Thank you for have, having us. This is, this is great. Yeah, and we have, I have my co-host, Sam Sise from Indiana. Sam, yeah. welcome yeah. again. And thank you and welcome the guests. All right. So we're gonna jump right into it, the topic, and then Adam Abba will lead the conversation. So the topic is gonna to be about uh, how to build strong African community, you know, in, in here in America or elsewhere. Uh, it is a very important topic as as the African immigrants we are impacted with a lot of things: violence, you know, economic hardship, you know, immigration issues. You know, voting rights and 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 then and and then access to resources. We are on the resource and so forth. You can name it. So we can have better guests than these two um, people here. So we welcome them to start the discussion. Thank you. You have the floor, Adam. Thank you. Um, in terms of how Africans can get African immigrants, or just Africans in general, get involved in the United States. I think it's very important. The first step is to know who your elected officials are. Um, make sure you are connected to your elected officials. Uh, make sure you're also connected to your law enforcement. Uh, one of the things when I talk to people is that every police precinct has a, a meeting monthly and no one knows that. And I'm like, how come you don't know that? It's something that you should attend, something where you should go and, you know, people get tickets all the time in their neighborhood and they're like, oh, I got a ticket for no reason. But what are you doing about it? Are you filing a complaint? Are you talking about it? Or are you just telling me about your problems? Um, it's also very important to be involved in education. Um, I know a lot of our parents are like, I don't have any time. Um, the PTA, get involved in your children's school. But we have this mentality that, oh, I have to work, work to send back home. There are people at back home dependent. But then you have children in the country who you don't pay attention to, and you're not watching them, and you're allowing society to raise them even though they come home every night, really they're being raised by the school system. They're being raised by television. They're being raised by other people around them and not you. And then you wonder why they have legal problems and legal issues. So it's very important for us to get involved legally, uh, locally with our governments to understand what our rights are. A lot of African immigrants, when I talk to them, they have no idea what their rights are. They'll come and tell me something and I'm like, that is illegal. Your landlord cannot do that to you. Or your, the teachers cannot say that to you. A social worker cannot talk to you like that. You should file a complaint. Language access is a really big issue in this country. But because we don't file for the census as we should or get involved as we should, we don't have proper translation. So when we go into the hospitals, if you speak Soninke, you don't have a Soninke translator. You don't have a Fulani tra uh, pull-up translator. And you, you, know, you have this issue even in the healthcare, they're like, oh, you're Fulani, that's the language you speak. And I'm like, no, my ethnic group is Fulani, but the language is Pula. So it's also educating the people that are around us. So that's just some of the ideas I have. Um, and this is just based on experience and the advocacy that I have done. So I'll pass it on to David. Uh, thank you, sister. Thank you, sister Adam Abba. Um, Adam Abba is, uh, before I introduce myself, he's, uh, She's a, um, a seasoned African um, immigration um, advocate. Um, she's always out there, either snow, hot water, weather, 
providing food and you know services to our community members in the Bronx, in Harlem, across all five boroughs. So thank you for all you do for our community. Uh, um, and we need that, you know, that's what we need. You know, a lot of folks in our community that could actually be, you know, self-sacrificing kind of like for the good of the whole community, playing their role, making sure our community have access to the most important or the much needed on resources, you know, especially during COVID. So thank you, Adamamba, for all you do. My name is David Kulibali, um, born and raised. I'm not from Gambia, but I'm very happy to, to be part of the discussion on this very important platform. Uh, um, and that's also something we should start thinking about beyond our countries, but then start thinking about as ourselves as African. You know, that's going to be a starting point to bring unity. We are all the same, especially if we're here in the United States, we should start forgetting uh, our countries of origin and identify ourselves purely as African. So I'm a graduate from Notre Dame. Uh, uh, Mr. Cisse is in uh, Indiana. Um, I went to Notre Dame. And uh, I'm someone who's uh, always seek to engage uh, the broader, I'm um, you know, passionate about engaging the broader African immigrant community uh, so that they could advance socially, uh, politically, and also economically. Uh, that's something that I do. Uh, I work for, before starting working for the board president, I used to work for Test and Trace. My job was to bring vaccine testing and other resources to our to the most impacted community and uh, we test and trace um, as the Bronx director uh, that was really good because you don't see a lot of us in position of leadership um, in here so that was really good and I'm always thinking about ways to you know also provide um, uh, strategies and opportunity to other people to be there so now I'm working for the Bronx borough president uh, leading a very strategic uh, unit. Um, um, someone as my predecessor has been there for, for the past 22 years and someone who's done a fantastic job and I'm taking over now uh, for the Bronx, not just like an African liaison, but for the whole Bronx, for the diverse community, which is good for us as African, because, you know, what I know, I'm going to make sure my community knows. Uh, so that's a little bit about me going into um, the conversation. Before I even do that, I just wanted to also say happy June Tiff. Uh, which is very important, which is um, uh, a way to honor enslaved uh, Africans, you know, because before they become American, they were taken from the continent uh, to come here. And their struggle and the stuff they've done have paved the way, have paved the way for us to be here. Without a struggle, what they've done, we wouldn't be able to come here. So opportunity to everyone. Um, how do we build a stronger African community uh, uh, in America. Um, before I even get into that, I, I just want to say that we are very, unfortunately, very fragmented, uh, especially in New York City here, very fragmented. Everybody is doing their own stuff here and there. Uh, for example, yesterday, I learned that the mayor was doing an African in, uh, dinner. I was like, I don't know. I, I don't even know that. You know, some of the... Uh, the, the you know the most active leaders might not even know something called African happening in the city. We don't even know because there's a big problem of leadership. Everybody wants to take credit for what they're doing. They want to be seen for what they're doing, and then we need to start changing that dynamic. It is time for us to now think about if Adama Adama Bai is doing something. I David should be there to support her 100%. And people will see how we're supporting uh, one another on the way uh, to make it much easier. Uh, they're going to love us. And our children will also see that there's unity. But we are so divided, and, and, and that's bad. I went to a funeral for Jennifer in Staten Island, who has been a champion for our community. There was very few people there. And these are people who are serving the community beyond money. You know, they, It's not like a paycheck for them when they, they, they are not celebrated, you know? Why? Because there's still unity. Even in the funeral, people were fighting, you know? So if the first thing is to really try to like uh, build a stronger leaders uh, for us to be civically engaged, to understand what it means to be an effective leaders, you know, beyond like a self-serving kind of uh, attitude or, 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 or benefits, you know? 
Um, Adam Abba mentioned some very important stuff. We need to start educating our community on how to understand the political process here in the United States, which means you need we need to start telling our folks to join, uh, um, uh, how you call it, uh, community boards to, you know, joining community board in your zip code, it's a powerful way to really understand some of the issues impacting your community and to also be part of the discussion or the discourse and to learn. And this is the first step to becoming a powerful politician. You could become a, this, uh, a county leader. You, you understand a lot of stuff. Our people don't do that, but all of a sudden we just want to be politician. We need to start from the you know grassroots level all the way up. Uh, so I, I do totally agree with Adam about that. We need to push our community to understand this process. We should have like panel discussion like this, where we kind of like tell them what is a community board? How do you uh, apply to become a member? Um, yeah, I know I'm saying a lot of stuff, but you know that's pretty much what we need to do. We need to be uh, stronger. Uh, one last thing I want to say before we, we, we I pass it over to Adama, uh, the Bronx Borough President Office have the only African Advisory Council in the in the New York City area. They don't have it in, in other boroughs. We only have it here, and that's something very powerful that we could utilize utilize as as a tool to advance the good of our community. But even that. It, it, it's not working, you know. So we need to revamp a lot of stuff that have been done, uh, you know, bringing all the leaders who have who have uh, paved the way for our community to be stronger and kind of like re-engage our community again. We need to really look beyond ourselves as David, as David, 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 no, no, no. How can we serve the greater good of our community? Uh, I think I'm going to stop here for now. Thank you very much. Mr. Savane, you are stunned. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you, David. <laughs> welcome. Hello, welcome, welcome there. Yeah, Hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome Rod. Alice. Yeah. Alice is our co-host here. So he just joined us um, now. I just come. Yeah. Are you right. from Germany? I'm in Germany, yeah. Yeah, I remember you. Good yeah, yeah, we, tag. <laughs> yeah, we talk, I think, from time ago. Yeah, I think, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Davis was on the show before. Yeah. yeah. All right. So um let's 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 circle back again. Um, if Adama has something um else to add before we go um to Sam and Alas to give uh, their uh, questions and opinions on this topic. Uh you know, David, you actually brought up a really good point that I, I definitely want to emphasize on about the leadership. You know, we have a lot of African elders that have been doing this for years, and it's not to discredit the work that they're doing because they have paved the way, but times are changing and you need to change with it. We have to share the platform. One thing I appreciate about David, anything that's in, I need to be in, he's like, oh, you should come here. You should go there. Uh, there's, or I do the same thing. Anything that I know that the youth need to be part of, I'm like, hey, you guys should attend this. You should, you should be there. We have to share the platform. We have to communicate with each other, but we also have to pave the way for the next generation. I'm not the youngest person out there, but there are younger generations of Africans that are advocating, and I'm allowing them to share the platform with me because they're going to be the next generation advocating for us. So it's very, very important that you tell us, hey, we have this meeting today. You should be there. Like you, David, I did not know that the mayor's office had a meeting. And it's not like the mayor's office. I don't blame the mayor's office. I blame our community for the lack of communication that we have with each other. So that's all I will add to that. All right. So thank you. I, I could just jump in right in and say something uh, quickly to that, to that end. Okay. Uh, that's something that I wanted to mention about um, uh, also building. We need folks to run. Uh, Momo do all these folks who've been doing this job. We need our community to be elected official and be in the in the room where decisions are made. We don't do that. Uh, we have we have Famoud, we have Adam Abba, we have Momodu. All these folks are qualified to be elected official. We, we have alas, we have Sam and we all have them. everybody. No, 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 I'm, not, I'm talking about folks. You. I'm talking about folks who are here in New York City. Those are in Germany. Because, and Indiana. And they vote for me. Then I must know you <laughs> now. We need to start here in New York City and the other people will replicate what we do it. I remember back it. in the days yeah, there was uh, African. So sad, guys. It's so sad. We have uh, Dr. Bola who was running. African went against him. Uh, last election, we were supposed to win District 16. But we have we have two brothers 
that went neck neck to neck like that i remember that no one no one gave up you know and another person alfia was with her yesterday i love her she's 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 our consumer woman you know but two african were like so like that why couldn't they come together to say listen brother if i support you you have a better chance to win in the next election if i'm not going to be a council member in this district maybe i'm going to run to be an assembly member we got to be strategic but nobody talked to each other they fought against each other they lost and they didn't lose our community lost we got to start changing sure. that way of doing we got to run we got to be encouraging folks we know they have the ability to make impact on our community to run listen there's a new law that just passed uh, 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 local uh, policy and law that give the power to our communities. You know, uh, 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 New York City is where you see uh, the fastest growing African community. But now with the new law, they can vote, we vote without being citizens. You know, if you have your working permit, you have your green card, you could vote you could vote in municipal election, like mayoral election, uh, borough president election, council member. So that's going to give you power to a lot of our folks, but they don't even know that we just had a civic engagement uh, meeting. Now a lot of people show up, but we need to start talking about that to tell folks in upcoming election, you can actually vote. Vote for your leaders so that it could be part of, uh, of, of the decision-making process as well. And, and why is that even important? Because our kids are looking up to us. You know, most of us, uh, even when I came here, the first thing people told me is to be a driver. You know, be a driver, be go work in the kitchen, small kind of work to get fast, fast money. You know, politics, politics one might not give you money, but it'll give you representation, which matters, you know. And our kid will see that we're doing diverse kind of work. We're not all doing the same work as drivers, are working like a small kind of work. But it's seeing David being the board president office as a director, as a big unit. They say, if David did this, I could even better for that. We need to be able to inspire our children so they see what we do and they also follow up to doing good things. You know, that's going to make our community even stronger and more powerful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, David. <laughs> that is so <laughs> in in inspiring. I mean, uh, before I come, because there are stuff here that is related to, um, I can relate to since I live in New York City. And then David actually called call me on this in this task. <laughs> so, but before that, I would actually allow Sam and then um, Ras to to see what if they have questions um, to Ad, uh, for Adama or David. Yep. Well, thank yeah, you, Sam, thank you, um, <laughs> thank you, uh, David, and thank you, Adama. You know. You guys have brought up a, a very, very, very important point um, with regards to uh, our community and engagement, uh, basically more about uh, how we can become one team, very, very important. And uh, from Adama's point, from schools to our homes, from homes to our community, how can we collaborate? And, uh, and, uh, and like David said too, to be one team and support each other. I think this is very, very important um, because, you know, like we all know, uh, united we stand and divided we shall fall. So that's the key word there. And, and uh, very important, especially in New York and in Indiana here, not very many. Um, there are some Africans here, of course, uh, <clears throat> not even half of uh, New York's uh, African community. So there's a lot of people there, but regardless of location, uh, really, all Africans, we all need to come together as one team. One team really uh, helps uh, accomplish a lot. Uh, when one person, like David was saying, one person runs for um, uh, for an office, everyone needs to rally behind that person and support that person to win. If they win, the African community wins. You know, it's just like that. That's the way, that's the vision we need to have so that we can have Africans in key positions where they can turn around and look at Africans and see what they can do to support the African community as well. So um, these are very, very, very important stuff. So, but, um, and there is a lot that can happen in African communities. I, I started in uh, Columbus, Ohio. That's uh, 
that was my first settlement. That's where I bought my first house and stayed there for 13 years before I moved to Indiana. And uh, I was a co-founder of the, uh, the Gambian Society in there. Um, and when I left and moved to Indiana because of work, uh, same thing, um, and I joined the Gambian community. I came up and joined the community and, uh, and uh, the following year they elected me as president. And so, so uh, you know, uh, after joining, so uh, it's, it's very important to have our voice in our community and, and share ideas and let, uh, uh, let us all learn from the subject matter experts in their areas of expertise. Very important is that it becomes a public education, uh, public awareness. We all become one family. Uh, we all celebrate when we win. Uh, we all mourn when uh, we lose a, a friend or a family member or anything. Uh, is it, that support that we need in every African community and, and very, very, very important. I remember in Columbus, Ohio, <coughs> there was a time that we, uh, uh, our community had uh, uh, to mourn the loss of one of our staff. Um, we came together and did what we needed to do until we sent his remains home. Uh, there was another time that uh, uh, as a community, uh, one of us uh, in, in, in Adam's area of expertise, uh, one of us, uh, our, our, in fact, was a female, uh, someone that was arrested and taken to jail. Uh, the community stood up and we fought and we fought and we fought and we, you know, we pulled money from our coffers and uh, went to bail that person, got, got them out. And I personally was the one that really went to the jail to pick her up and get her out of there after we paid, uh, paid the bail bond. So the community engagement is very, very important. It's very important to, uh, to come together because you never know uh, what is coming next. And uh, uh, not only that, but build that kind of relationship and that foundation for the young generation to Adam's point for the next generation because at some point we are all going to retire and we need to have a, a strong foundation for the people that are going to take over from us. So very important. And I'm going to stop here for now. And like I said, uh, at some point I'll be shutting this down until I get in my car because I need to head out to Columbus, Ohio uh, and uh, drive three and a half, uh, three hours to get there. So, but I will mute my line and uh, so that I don't interrupt. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you both, uh, yeah. David and Sam. Adam. Thank, Thank you. you. And, uh, yeah, have a nice journey. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. All right, Alas, you can um, you can come in and then if you have any questions or comment before before I come. Um, yeah, as far as I can understand, is about the community and uh, the community forward. And uh, I just uh, hear more from David and a little bit from other more. I think here the main concern is how we work together and uh, try to have success in certain areas like uh, the elections you used to have there, the voting and so is very important. Some said it also. Together you are stone, they used to say it. Yeah? Divided you are dust, and dust cannot move anything. You know, about we Africans uh, happen to have such a problem sometimes. Uh, just to help one to go forward, which is going to be benefit of the others, you know. Uh, it's not uh, that everybody should be Joe Biden today. And how many people do you have in America? But uh, it's the easiest way to take one person and then here we go. When everybody try to discuss or try to block the other person, so maybe it's America still with our president and everything is being retarded, you know, and uh, that's why we have democracy, and democracy you have it everywhere, even in, in your home, you know, the majority carries the vote. <laughs> if you say something, uh, the wife is, uh, or the children are having something against it, you as a father, you have to think of it, because it's also democracy. Democracy doesn't mean only outside, but in time, and especially concerning committees and so it's very important that people understand that it's the, uh, it's the tool what, what, what holds people together and um, what helps people also to, to gain their, to, to, to reach their goals. Uh, in this case, my only advice is that uh, you have to get 
meetings frequently maybe and always try to invite every member and then try to make a list of topics to discuss with everybody who is there and uh, every decision the people who are there can vote also you know give them the chance also to vote right if you say okay now we want to take david to you know be a member in the in your christ parliament there something like that to represent the african community uh, then give the others also the chance because we're talking of democracy to vote for that idea you understand what i mean does it mean that they are against david or they are for david or they are against Hawaii or something like that no but it's just that we respect the democratic rules which is giving us freedom and then these people who also have the chance to vote they feel also respected and counted also to be part of the community you understand these small things we always used to undergo but it's a recognition to all those people who are there representing if you give them that feeling they'll be coming every time to meeting because they know that maybe their their opinion is also needed and they'll be ready to uh, how to call it vote or take any action what the community is asking whether it's uh, meeting every uh, once a month or, or go and clean the community bureau or uh, taking action in summer playing football or so they all need that feeling we are all human beings we need always a little bit of recognition when and that doesn't cost money and once that is there then you will see that you can organize yourself better because everybody every individual is feeling also to be part and parcel of the community and also a very important person you understand that's the easiest way to bring the community together and everybody knows that has a part to play so if there are something to decide also not only four people decide there three people there as i just uh, heard from uh, david also that these people you know uh, to, to to go for the vote that they were uh, against each other things like that without understanding that when uh, one goes and the others pulls behind him it's going to be for everybody there you know uh, we need to understand that you know before being a uh, an opposition why not join hands and then push somebody it can be any other person just to represent you your, your your community because these people these white people if they see that you people join hands they'll give you a big respect if they see that you people are organized they'll give you a big respect don't underrate that it doesn't need to say that you are having money or not but let them just see that you people are united you people are democratic you people are organized you know they will be sometimes even uh, jealous because most of them are not that organized you know? i just used to hear about your community and so and i have the feeling that it's a very good community especially uh, around new york and new york area being the biggest african community you know you cannot have it better just uh, my advice you know come together work together try to understand each other encourage your other people who are trying to cut themselves and so on, show them that they are part of person of the community and then try to work for i think that's all i, I, I could say as advice for your community there thank you thank you alas um that is very um important advice and of course sam sise so I'm going to, you know, come in with uh, some questions uh, for Adama and uh, David as it relates to this uh, topic. Um, they mentioned something about unity. Un why are we uh, not supporting? He mentioned, David mentioned something about Dr. Bola's election. I was here. Um, Africans were divided and he mentioned something about District 16, I believe. Uh, with, a, with a young guy called uh, Brahman. I witnessed that as well. 
actually I took part in um, Dr. Bull, I mean like a 2013 election. Okay, so I was not on Dr. Bola's team, I must admit, um, but I will explain to David what is the issue. And so our African brothers and sisters can understand our problem. I was the, um, I was the one who started uh, with Naima's campaign before uh, Dr. Bola's campaign was announced. And um, I could tell you, Dr. Bola might seem a victim, but he wasn't actually. Our team, the team that I was part of was the victim because we started. Um, when, when we were called by Naima, Naima used to work for Councilwoman Dan Foster. She had, she knew the job, well-spoken, articulated young lady from Ghana, okay? Our mother was on our team and other Ghanaians. So when I was organizing the African Day Parade, I came, you know, I, I brought Naima in to assist me 2011 to 2014. That was when we built our relationship and she trusted me to become her treasurer and also um, they came to, uh, to build a campaign with her. So. Initially, before Dr. Bola was announced, it was Naima's campaign and uh, Sigmusha Drame and uh, Fomut, they were all there uh, at Naima's house when Naima announced me to be the treasurer and also um, did uh, started announcing his campaign. That time, Dr. Bola didn't come to, to the scene. So I would say um, if there's any division there, it was created by um, Bola's, um, Bola's team, really, because the people who, the person who announced first, it should be the one we should support. <laughs> so if Bola, Bola was not a victim there. So, and then uh, Bola, Bola in turn wanted to get me to his side. I said, no, I'm with this young lady and I see some potential in her. So I think um, what I learned from that is uh, because Naima's campaign, the people behind, Bola's campaign, we're not able to manage Naima the way they wanted. So they found it easier since they cannot get their political footing in Naima's campaign. Let's go for somebody that we can manage and we can control and we can have a say in this political thing. Being that Dr. Bola is a seasoned doctor, you know, and financially fluent, I mean, financially affluent, he, he, he get, you know, they sided with him. And the end result was not good because Naima get fifth position, I think, out of the eight candidates and that Dr. Bola get the last position. So the division of the vote, if that had, if that had added to that campaign, Naima's campaign, the team that I was with, we would have at least gotten second or third position because that time we were going against powerhouse like uh, uh, Vanessa Gibson from an assembly woman well known already, we knew that um, we couldn't get that seat. But just to make the story short, I just wanna make that clarification so David understand and uh, Adama, so they know that we are, there are some people among us who create divisions. Once they cannot get their saying, they are the one who always go on the side and bring somebody else against us. So we Africans, what we should learn is that if, if I'm not getting a saying in something, I shouldn't go against it because that will create more problems. Okay, for Abdurrahman's case, um, I, I didn't know about how that happened, two people running against each other from African community, but I knew they tried to talk among themselves and then it never worked. So it, it's, 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 you're right. I mean, we, we are divided and we need to start working together. Now you mentioned one thing about some um, some event that happened and I wasn't aware of as well. Usually when an African event happens, um, as a founder of the Gambian News, usually they inform me or even the Gambian community here. But that that happens a lot where, you know, you have those kind of, you know, events and as a community leader, you don't get, you know, associated with. So I think it's about time uh, we sit down. I told Mada and other, you know, uh, figures there. We, it's about time we sit down. And I, I like David's approach and, and Adama that we don't have to look at country. Because right now, countries 
it's not the point. We are all African. When we're in New York here, we're all considered the same. It doesn't matter if you come from Nigeria, Ghana, <laughs> you know, or South Africa or Guinea. We are all, this, they put us the same back. We are all black. But, but, but Mali said it, no, no matter where you come from. But no matter where you come from. <laughs> so, David, if you can, you know, if you and Adam, are, since you guys are at the forefront, you guys appear more events than any one of us, we can have that conversation. Because when that fire happened here, I saw a lot of division also. <laughs> African community. We, the GYO, we saw it. You know, many people were trying to, you know, do their own press conference and they were not seeing eye to eye. That's when I knew we have an issue. I told, you know, I started speaking to other people and if we can get everybody on the table and we can have a strong African presence here. Because we have kids who are growing here and, and our voting is getting increased every now and then. If we can strategize we can have people like David in political office very soon or Adama, but we have to strategize a way how, you know, to speak one voice. And if you see District 17 here, Hispanic people are the one always winning because they are population. They they, they support each other. If you if you if you um if you if you if you want to stand here, <laughs> District 17 or other districts where there are Hispanic population, good luck. You, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta find a way. Otherwise, you will not succeed. And that's why Africans haven't been in power. I mean, in 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 the city council, we have never got an African city council member here. You know, even though people have that's tried mm -hmm. twenty years ago, city <laughs> has tried. Many people, Charles Cooper, and Naima, and you have Abraham and other people. We still haven't even come close. So. We have, and we our population is growing. But the problem is, we are not taking voting seriously. We are not sensitizing. We are not. We are not also, um, you know, connecting and saying that we need representation. I, I agree with Adama and David. If you, you can have all the money, but if you don't have representation, you don't make the laws. <laughs> you know, you know, you know, your community is underserved. Now, who, who do we blame? Like Adama was saying, we don't, we don't, we don't. The resources are there. But we are not, it's not getting to get into African communities. So I just want to highlight that point. And then, uh, David, if you want to come, or Adama, you can come in and Alas can come. David, you go ahead because I know you have to leave. So I'll pass it to David. Um, well, uh, thank you so much. Um, um, uh, again, uh, to Alison's point, we need a platform like this to really talk about issues in our community to clarify those issues so that people understand. Uh, I thank you for kind of like going back into time to kind of like explain a little bit what happened. And I, I've heard about it. I didn't want to go deeper into that conversation, but yes, they still kind of like show that we are still divided and there's the lack of communication. Like uh, Momodu being as a, you know, important leader in our community doesn't even know there's something at the mayor's office. I don't know. I don't know about that. A lot of leaders don't know. There's a lack of communication. If we communicate, we know what, you know, Dr. Bola wants to run and this person wants to run. Once you know who's going to run, we all support that person. So communication is vital in our community. And, and I think that was, that that's still a big problem. Uh, how do we do that? We should continue to have, you know, um, uh, conversation like this one to address, you know, to talk about uncomfortable issues so that people understand what's up, what's happening. So thank you, uh, uh, brother Momodu for clarifying this. Now, what I'm thinking in my vision, uh, since now I'm at the borough president office in the Bronx, where our community is, uh, I'm thinking about having a bigger African presence. You know, you, you see the, uh, Momodo just mentioned, you know, leading the African Day Parade and stuff like that. We got to do something big here. You see the Puerto Rican doing a parade. You say, oh, this community, we are bigger in the Bronx. We don't even do that. You know, we should shut down the street in the Bronx here, maybe in September, get every single person together. Because I don't know so many organizations, this person is doing his own Africa Day Parade, this person, and <laughs> nobody goes to these things. <laughs> How can we come together and do something huge? And people see that, people are scared of us. Wow, this they see unity. It's human nature. There's always going to be some little issue in there. 
but we have to focus more on things that unite us rather than things that divide us. We come together and we do something new. So that's my vision. I'm going to speak to a lot of leaders to see how we could actually address some of these issues so that one person runs, we all support a person. One person wants something, uh, and as leaders, we try to like teach the person or we tell the person, oh, somebody else is already doing that. We want you to support that person. The next time we'll support you. Stuff like that, this kind of conversation. Um, I don't have any more thing to say. Uh, I wanted to just, I don't know if we're talking about, because I know I got to go soon. Uh, I don't know if we're talking about what's happening um, uh, 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 in Ukraine. Quickly, there are so many wars in Africa right now that are, all, um, that are overlooked. I would say like that. People don't even know about those wars. Uh, everybody's talking about the Ukraine war. And what is even shameful is that the war in Ukraine and Russia, kind of like the Russian invasion of Ukraine, kind of like highlighted some deeper issue in Africa. We don't have food security in Africa. The food we eat come from Russia, from Ukraine. In the way that President of Senegal, Macky Sall, went to Russia to discuss, oh, we need some wheat, we need those things, and <clears throat> fertilizers and stuff. So we're talking about Africa as the creator of humanity. But this war is impacting our country, and now things is coming. Like, how can that be possible? You know, I've heard a uh, Rwandan president say, I'm not going to rely on this food. So he's doing something for his country. But South Africa, all these countries are heavily impacted. So that means if Europe closed the door, we're going to starve. We are all these lands. This is unacceptable. From Ivory Coast, we are the uh, first uh, 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 cocoa beans producer. Uh, but I don't. I'm, when I was younger, it wasn't easy to eat some chocolate because we take it, we send it to uh, uh, Switzerland, they transfer and they send it back to us at a higher price. So I think uh, it's a shame that Africa cannot really um uh lead the way to feed the world we could do that so i'm gonna stop there and hopefully we can have this conversation again uh, there's so much to say and even the way our people were treated when the war started you know uh they were picking some white people easily to go but when it comes to the black people they were pushed back go back and die there that's sad you know we're human beings as well all right thank you i'm gonna pass it over to adam Amba. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow, wow, very interesting point. I think we're gonna have um, some conversation around this issue, especially those uh, mistreatments and uh, injustice. Absolutely, but definitely, David. You know, we would we would open for that. Yeah, Thanks. thank you, Adam. Well, you can come in, and then um, you can come in, and you can also hit on Ukraine war at the same time. Then Alas can come in, uh, and he can also hit on Ukraine war at the same time. We can just. Yes. Yeah, so the Ukraine war is just like any other war, like David said. There are thousands of African wars in Africa that are not being spoken about. Um, I know right now in Guinea, we just had a meeting with elected officials. We're afraid of a, a civil war, you know, and these things are not discussed. But one of the things that Ukraine war highlighted is the discrimination of immigrants in America. So the Ukrainians were given all this status to come into the United States. But when it comes to refugees from Africa, it's a difficult process. So it just highlights a lot. I think the part where we as Africans will suffer is that they will tap into our country for more resources and that will cause more civil conflict. There's a lot to say about the Ukraine war and how it affects our community, but it does not affect us as individuals here who are currently living here right now and how we communicate with each other. So I think one of the biggest topics is what you guys brought us here for, is how do we build that community? How do we uh, be successful as Africans in this country? Um, I think one of the things I do want to bring up is uh, work. I, I think a lot of Africans are like, oh, you have to be a doctor. You have to be a lawyer. Um, tell your children to explore other options. The trade schools are amazing. I just had a meeting with a sanitation. A sanitation director makes more than a doctor. <laughs> um, there are other fields in this country that are not just, don't limit your, your kids, don't limit our community. We need Africans in every field possible. If they wanna study fashion, encourage them. We need fashion, we need Africans in fashion. If they wanna study arts, 
we as Africans, we're known for our art, but we discourage our children from studying art. It put them in art, allow them to do what they need. I actually have a family who reached out to me recently who doesn't want their child to study art. And I'm like, no, allow your child to study art and empower them and you know, encourage them to do this. I mean, so the topic could go on forever, but the best way as us as in a community, how we can grow in this country is we have to have a conversation with each other. We have to support one another and get involved. Get involved is very important. Um, before I got on this uh, Zoom call, I was telling you that um, we hide each other, we hide a lot as Africans when we have a problem. And sometimes if we share the problems that we have, someone has a similar problem. Like when I was going through my immigration, I posted it on Facebook. And I remember my cousins would say, oh, I would never write that on Facebook. But it was interesting once I posted, so many people reached out to me and said, oh, I also have immigration problems. Can you help me? And I was able to help them. But if we hide from each other, we won't be able to help each other. And another thing that I've noticed a lot in our African community when someone has a problem, we tend to stay away from them. No, that's the time we need to be with them the most. That's when the time we need to support them the most. Like you mentioned, I realized the division in the African community where we were dealing with that fire situation. We lost 17 lives. We didn't have time to pick anybody because we were doing so much advocacy. There was so much the families needed. A press conference was the last thing that we needed to do. But GYO stepped in. And it was amazing how they delegated, dedica, uh, delegated roles. Some people were at the, um, the set service center. Some people were at the hotel. Some people were at the GYO center. I and imagine if all the other African communities worked with us, what we could have accomplished that day or how much, you know, it was amazing how WhatsApp was working. Like people were texting each other in WhatsApp. There were so many WhatsApp groups. People found out about loved ones. People found people on WhatsApp. And we have such a diverse way of connecting to each other, but we don't want to, we don't know how to utilize it. So um, it's very important for us to be connected. It doesn't matter where you're from. I'm from Guinea, but I'll support my Gambians anytime. I'll support my Nigerians anytime. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mm -hmm. matter where you're from. I'm oh, here. All of Africa. <laughs> all of Africa, yes. Thank you. I, I, I am always very happy also wow. when I meet some Africans here. Even yesterday, we were having a concert here. I, I didn't go there because I don't have time, but it was more also cultural that the university do always every year once. So I met two Africans. Uh, I didn't have time, but I had to wait. They were coming like uh, 100 meters towards me. I got the feeling that they wanted to ask something. Maybe they don't know where they're going. So I had to stand and wait for them. They came and they told me they are from Congo. You know, it was also very interesting. So I could talk with them on the other one said, okay, the other person is a visitor to him, so they are looking where the concert is, and so so I have to direct them where. Uh, you know, I, I love it always to see Africans, because I don't see Africans much here like like in New York, you know. So you people are there, but the, uh, the feeling I have is uh, just the communication. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Alas. Um, um, again, Adama, Adama mentioned Yeah, we cannot hear you, Mr. Sawane. You're frozen, Mr. We Sawane? Can't. Yeah, I think you kind of like froze. Um, your screen is not. Yeah, okay, let us leave Adama. Adama wanted to continue. I just mm -hmm. uh, okay. interrupted, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I think I got it. Yeah, my my line went down a little bit. Yeah, Adama mentioned very important thing here that we cannot oversight. Um, when people hide complexity, you know, when she, she said, when she had the immigration issue, she posted it, and I believe it was all over the news. And thank God that had you know brought in good you know people, goodwill folks to, mm -hmm. on her side, and she was able to get it resolved. Now, if we don't, people don't know your problem, they cannot help you. And this complexity, this ego, this pride, is hurting us. Yeah, 
you know, you have an issue, you have a family issue, or they will look, you know, they will look at me differently. That shouldn't be the problem. Let's take care of the problem. And as he mentioned, another thing is, you don't know your friends until something happens to you. Our, our community, we tend to stay away when somebody has an issue. That's the time that the person need us. Yeah. Other people has to come in, non-Muslims, people who are, don't even look like you. I have seen that during this fire. Mm -hmm. People who donated 20,000 to GYO. These people don't even look like us. Yeah. 8,000, you know, towards the victims. Why? Because they, they could sympathize. So I think our main problem right now is working together, but it has to start from the heart. I always say that if the heart is not, is not open and clean towards one another, we cannot, we will hold ourselves yeah. and doing bigger and greater things. So unless we learn that everybody is given opportunities everybody has their you know whatever they need to have in life they will get that so just be happy for your brother be happy for your sister and support them your success has nothing to do with my you know failure how can your success interrupt my failure no so this is the concept that we have oh if Allah succeeded I would be I would I would fail hmm. so we are having this kind of mindset i think that's why we are where we are and if we see somebody who has a potential let's say sam has a potential to be this i will not tell the sam because i will say sam would beat me to it or sam mm -hmm. would be better than me and the worst of worst is support each other's business we have african businesses here we don't support them and the reason is because if i support alas or if I support David or Adama, Adam will be more money, more money than me, or be more successful than no, me. I will, I will go, I will go and support a Chinese who I can't look at. Yeah. Right? That's why get... they, they, or they don't respect us. That's why they always laugh at us because they know that we are. It's sad to say, but we are not organized and yeah. we don't support each other. Yeah. You know, these white people they know that from us. That's why they don't have any respect for us. You know, you yeah, can I'm, have. I'm going to so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you know, Alice, let's, um, let's let uh, yeah. David go. I'll say my last word. Yeah, thank you. I'm going to say, uh, and Adama <clears throat> is going <clears> to, <throat> Adama I will stay here. She knows a lot of things and she's going to lead the conversation. But I just wanted to say thank you so much to, 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 to the Gambian Youth Association organization. They've done this fantastic job. And we need an organization like that to, to be a role model, kind of like teach other small organization how to serve the community. Everyone was looking up to, sorry, to the campaign uh, organization. I called Momode, I said, what can I do? You know, as a testing trace, uh, all I could do is to bring PPEs and sanitizers and stuff, uh, test kits. But that time people don't need that at, at the moment, but we also needed to keep our community safe, you know, and I send those resources there and I try to, uh, send uh, the GoFundMe for uh, that was the, the good one uh, mm -hmm. by the, young, the, Ghani, uh, the Gambian Youth Association. Other people wanted to do something different. <clears throat> they created stuff, they brought me into the conversation, sorry. And I told them, yes, but we already have this GoFundMe. What we need to do is to amplify and share this one and donate to this one. What you could do, I told the folks, for example, you could organize all the African ambassador all the embassies yeah i remember that, that could be your strategy tap into that they didn't do it everybody wanted to do their own uh, little thing <laughs> once i said that they got mad at me they never did it uh i think what i said was so powerful he said that the initiative died it didn't go so i became the enemy i don't care yeah, yeah. because we already have an organization that was doing the job if you want to do something additional that's fine but come up with another strategy that doesn't distract uh, uh, what is being done on the ground. So I was very proud of what has been done by the Gambian Youth Organization. That was fantastic. And we need more of that. Yeah, I think we so need, much. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I think we don't uh, need more of um, David, David mindset, you know, and Adama, because they, uh, I have seen their work.
trust me, these people have seen their work. But David, you know, always want want to make sure that we don't have duplicate responsibility or duplicate yes. things. Mm-hmm. If, if this person is doing it, let's go and support him. Yeah. He, I've been going I think that's the him. best. That's the best thing that <laughs> uh, everybody. Is I'm going to have to talk, but we talk soon. Okay. Thank you so All much right. for having Thank me. Thank you so much. Adam yeah. about you got you got it floor. Thank you. Thank you. The Thank sister you. is everything. Bye bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So Adama will also leave very soon, but um, if he can just come, she can just come in and then give us any final thoughts, and then we can finish up the conversation. Yeah, yeah, we can wrap up because I think Sam is also on the way now. He's standing in the traffic, uh, in the middle of the traffic. Yep, yeah. <laughs> that's right. I definitely want to end it as we definitely need to support each other. Um, don't be afraid to talk about your problems. Don't be afraid to reach out and ask for help. There are a lot of African children in the ACS system that have been taken away from their parents. There are a lot of African parents that are going, Africans that are going through health issues, um, whether it be cancer, whatever it is. Yeah, don't- uh, I, I don't know, what, what, one second. I just wanna, because I don't wanna forget this. Um, you mentioned African taken away from their parents, but can you explain the situations that, ha- why that happened? So our, our followers can know what are the situations that somebody would take your parents, even your baby from, I mean, your kids from you, um, so that our people can be mindful about. One of the main reasons why we get our children taken away from us is lack of um, language access. So a lot of times parents don't understand what's going on. They don't understand the laws and their rights. So when someone comes in and talks to them about their child or the school makes a report, they automatically freak out or they don't ask for help and it escalates to their children getting taken away. Um, I can't give specific examples online because then, you know, it'll sh- explain who the person is for confidentiality reasons. Um, but definitely if you have a situation in the school where most of times it starts, make sure you get help right away if you don't understand what's going on. Even if they say, oh, don't worry, it's nothing. Seek help. Because when they tell you, no, it's nothing, it escalates. If you do not understand what someone is telling you, do not pretend to understand. Tell them you need a translator. If you have to call a cousin, a friend, or somebody to translate for you, please do. Because you say the wrong thing, you do the wrong thing, you will get your child taken away from you. But how we as people can support in the community when a child is taken away is rally around a parent, uh, make sure they get an advocate, which is what we are, and ask the advocate how they can support. Sometimes they need letters saying that this is a good parent, people to testify in a community. And you know, with Africans, once we say testify, they go, oh, don't leave me alone. <laughs> but sometimes parents need that. Someone in the community say, no, this person is actually a really good mom or this person is actually a really good dad. Please give them back their child. Sometimes we need, if the child does get taken away, they have a thing where they do a 24 hour hearing, like it's an emergency hearing. And sometimes they need to be placed with another family. So a family should step up and say, hey, it doesn't matter if you're Gambian, Senegalese, listen, I'll take the child. I'll take the child, if they're, but you cannot be in communication with the parents while you have the child in custody. But these are just some ways that we can help each other as community members. But definitely when you have an ACS case or any issue with your school, reach out to an advocate. There's a thousands of advocates. You can look up partnerships. They're in all... In New York City, they're in all five boroughs. So any partnership can support you with that. Um, if you have an education issue, same thing. They, you have a parent advocate in all these schools. Make sure you reach out. Um, again, like I said, it's most of the time it's um, language issues. Um, are, are there circumstances that um, they will take your child away from you because um, you are not giving them sufficient food or they yeah. have not been taken care of at home? Yes. So if you lack food in your house, yes, your child will be taken away if you. But of course, it depends on what kind of ACS person you come across. Let's be honest. Some ACS workers are very nice and understanding. They will connect you with resources. So they'll help you apply for food stamps. They'll connect you with pantries. But then there's some ACS workers who don't care. They'll just rather take away the child. It's easier for them to just get rid of the problem. Um, with ACS, how it works, and when a child is taken away, they are placed with somebody else. Um, and when they're placed with somebody else, you don't exactly know how long you'll get your child back until you have your hearing. Um, so it's very important to make sure you, you get help and you tell people, listen, my child has been taken away. I need help. Um, 
if your child is not cold properly, someone can call ACS. If it's winter and you know it's you know eight degrees outside and your child is not wearing a jacket, someone can call ACS on you. Um, <laughs> because they're concerned if the child doesn't have a coat. So make sure your child is equipped with the right clothing. If you can't afford it, there are resources out there. A GYO even had a bunch of clothing drive. There's so many other organizations that have clothing drive. There's Even if you're not a citizen, there are still resources out there. People think because I'm not American, because I'm undocumented, I can't get resources. You can. There are ways around it. I, you know, that's the one thing I have to say that's good about us being in New York. Now, if you were in Indiana, <laughs> Sam, <laughs> I would have to reach out to you. That's a red state. It's very different over there. <laughs> but I'm sure there are people willing to give out, you know, or ship from New York to Indiana some clothing. So um, even, even in Germany. <laughs> even in Germany. <laughs> even in Hanover. <laughs> yeah. That's a long way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Adam, just one thing I, I just wanted done. to say to Adam. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, what I just wanted to say sometimes uh, uh, you have to make sure that the community, the people are also. Uh, uh, they also understand what's up on this new communication system. Maybe this is also a problem, a hindrance, you know, uh, that sometimes they don't, they say, okay, I don't know what uh, what I can do on Facebook or how to go with uh, uh, WhatsApp. And the messages uh, you send are on uh, WhatsApp, for example. You see, maybe such people can also miss the point. So they're, there you find a way of uh, making it like, as I just suggested, invite them for a meeting in a hall, you know, so that these people can also have access. You know, I think that will also help the community because you know Africans, you said it here yourself, sometimes they will never talk about the problem because of same things like that. I know that, you know, we, 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 we talk about that in especially in my place in Gambia, hundred times about this COVID, you know, it's just a, an African mentality. Anything um, like sickness or death or anything, nobody wants to talk about it. You know, we always run away from that because of what that people don't look us too low, that people don't see us imperial. You know, these problems we have. Even these white people, they know it. They disturb us. These problems, they push us back. These problems, they tear us apart, you know? And we have to work on that, you know? And uh, uh, people should come out with their problems. Life is life. Anything you see in life here, not, you are not the only person having it or, or thinking that, you know? Uh, the, world, the world is big. So we have to go with that direction. You know, any problem, come out, talk about it. Because once you talk about it, that's where you have also the uh, solution. You know, but once you know, when you don't talk about it, keep it yourself at home alone. It's dangerous. It's just like you having cancer, and then you don't talk about it. One day you fall down. Who's business? Nobody can help you because you never came out of it. You know. So I think that's my advice for your community, anyway. Thank you, thank you. Um, um, Sam can come in and then we can wrap it up. Sam, um, if you wanna say anything, final words, Adama or Ukraine war or anything, you know. <laughs> oh, have you guys talked about the Ukraine war already? <laughs> <laughs> well, I yeah, was- We, 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 we have not started. We got some- oh, we haven't back started that, yeah, global. yeah. Okay, we so I will stay with- um, Yeah, I'll stay on this. I'll stay on what we're talking about, you know, other than- uh, really thanking uh, uh, Adama and David for their time. Uh, this is a very important topic and Adama raised uh, very uh, uh, important stuff that uh, the African community really need to know. And I think some of the things uh, we really need to do in, in our communities is to really um, uh, get people to collaborate, but get people to 
understand that we are all in this together and we're all one team. And also identifying certain individuals in the community that are uh, subject matter experts in certain areas like Adama in New York there, uh, I think will be a, a key to this because some Africans don't want to come out of their shed. They, want, they don't want to come out and put their story out there for everyone to know. So they want to shy out of that. Um, they're afraid that when they come out to say their problem, everybody's going to know about it and nobody's going to help. So identifying well, people, people like, enough. yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> so, so people like Adama um, is very important for people to identify and, and know what she does. So when someone has a problem, we can just say, you know, go talk to Adama. That way they're not talking to everybody. They're not going to talk to two or three different people before they get to the right person uh, by identifying the right person first and, and uh, declare that out there, let the whole community know that, you know, Adama is here to help if you have such and such and such issues. Uh, talk to Adama. You don't need to talk to anybody else. Just go to talk to Adama and Adama will help you. If she can't help you, she'll find help for you, you know, because this is her area of expertise. Same thing for David, same thing that uh, we all do in our communities. Al is in Germany and Sawani in, uh, in, uh, in, in New York there and uh, myself in Indiana here. So if all African communities have people that they can talk to or know and identify people that they can talk to for certain things and seek advice, I think will be very helpful without putting their story out in the public. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you. so thank, thank you, you Adama. Thank you for your time. Really. Yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank All thank right. You, Adam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank Adama, you, for Adam. coming. Thank um, you. It's it's definitely a pleasure, and uh, you're doing a wonderful job in the community. Both of, both of you, you and David. So we really appreciate this, and we're gonna continue this conversation around African communities, how we can get you know better in doing what we are doing, and then bring us together so we can achieve better things together. Thank you very much. You all. Thank you for having me. I think we can Take care. Uh, leave, leave Adama now to go. Yes. <laughs> he must be having also some appointment. Some engagement, yes. <laughs> Next week we can continue with the Ukraine war. Oh, okay, okay. Take care. Yes. Sam, thank take you care. so much, Sam. Alice, Alice, thank you. And Shawani, Adama, thank you all. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. All right. Yeah. All right, bye-bye. All right. Yeah.